Just like The Haunting of Hill House, Bly Manor is stuffed with creepy secret ghosts watching events from the shadows. Yippee Kai, movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'll be revealing all the hidden ghosts I found in Bly Manor, where to find them, and explaining their connection to the Lady of the Lake and Flora's dollhouse. Spoilers ahead of course, so take care. In the first episode, just after Danny arrives, as Flora shows her around the house and they go up the stairs, you can spot a figure wearing a hat lurking in the corner. This is the Plague Doctor ghost, and you can see him move his head ever so slightly upwards as if observing Danny's arrival. The Plague Doctor's introduced in the eighth episode when he comes to the manor to diagnose Viola's sickness. He's killed around a decade after her death when he accidentally wanders into the path of the vengeful Lady of the Lake, while the manor is being used as a quarantine location after a plague outbreak in Bly. You can see him next, reflected in the mirror of Danny's room after Miles wanders in. And when Danny is having dinner for the first time with Mrs Gross and the children, you can see the Plague Doctor's beaked mask, brown coat and gloves just behind Miles and in front of the dining room door. He seems to quickly disappear once the camera moves to a wider shot. Later, after Flora's finished her bath, she opens the door to her room and you can see the silhouette of the creepy ghost. Then, after Danny tucks Miles into bed, the Doctor reappears inside the bathroom. And when Danny walks through the bathroom, you can see his reflection in the mirror. As Danny puts Flora to bed, the Plague Doctor can be seen hiding near the window in her bedroom. Later that night, you can spot his beak-shaped mask in this shot here, as he silently watches Danny coming out of the kitchen. And then he's here at the end of the corridor. The next day, after Miles shows Danny the spider, he appears at the end of the garden. Then as Danny and the kids go back to the house, he's lurking outside the manor in this shot, at the same time that Peter Quint's ghost first appears to Danny. At lunch, the Plague Doctor appears almost in plain sight in the kitchen fireplace. The next time Danny puts Flora to bed, the Plague Doctor's watching on yet again, this time from the corridor. And when Miles comes to ask Danny for a fan, he's back to lurking in the bathroom. This next appearance is very slight, but you can just spot his hat reflected in the walk-in closet mirror here. He also later watches Danny emerge from Flora's room after she was locked in the closet by the children. And then at the very end of the first episode, the creepy profile of the ghost appears in the garden. There's a spooky moment in the second episode when Danny descends into the basement to recover Flora's Lady of the Lake doll. As she turns off the light and leaves, hidden in the pile of discarded old dolls, you can spot the doll face ghost sitting up. This ghost is a little boy that Flora discovered playing with her dollhouse. He gets his name Dollface Ghost from the mask that Flora took from another doll in the attic and put on him, as she said his face was unfinished. The boy became a ghost when he was killed by the Lady of the Lake during one of her walks to her daughter's old room. You can spot his ghost standing at the end of a corridor on the ground floor while Danny is looking for Miles in the second episode. In the third episode, you can just make out his nightgown here outside the door as the police officer goes to leave. And then moments later, he's back in the house just behind Danny. The next morning as Danny's getting up, you can spot him lurking in the shadows. And in a super creepy moment, he appears in the mirror of Flora's bedroom where he turns his head as Danny walks past. And you can see him move his head again as he watches Danny leave Flora's room after she kisses her goodnight in the fourth episode. You can also see him crouched in the corner of the kitchen here, which must be one of his favourite hiding spots because he's back there in the fifth episode. And during one of Mrs Gross's time loops, the little boy ghost pops up behind some furniture in the main hallway. Also hidden in this shot to the right of the staircase is the ghost of the vicar, somberly looking on. The vicar was the second victim who accidentally found himself caught in the Lady of the Lake's deadly path. And he appears again in the fifth episode in the bathroom between Flora and Miles' bedrooms. In the third episode, as the police officer is leaving, you can spot a hidden ghost standing to attention at the back of the entrance hall. We don't know exactly how this soldier died, but during one of Flora's memories while she was tucked away, her Uncle Henry tells her about a ghost he once knew at Bly Manor. I had a friend when I was your age too. In this house, in fact, he was a soldier, and I was very afraid of him. 
until I gave him a story. We don't know if Viola's ghost killed this soldier or if he died of some other cause. However, during the Second World War, the British government requisitioned large country houses and estates to serve as part of the war effort, and it's quite possible that this soldier was someone working at Blind Manor at the time who was unlucky enough to cross paths with the Lady of the Lake. He also appears behind Miss Jessel as she plays with Flora's dolls. A nice detail in this scene is that the camera very briefly sharpens its focus on the soldier doll just before he shows up behind Rebecca. This next one's tricky to see, but you can spot the soldier for just a split second when the lightning flashes in the kitchen while Rebecca and Peter are talking together. The soldier ghost also appears again towards the end of a corridor just after the doctor who's come to check on Flora leaves. You'll need to watch this scene carefully, because when the doctor was talking to Danny, the corridor was empty, but after he leaves, the ghost is now there. And in the fourth episode, he's creepily watching Danny outside while she burns her former fiancé's spectacles in the bonfire. Then in the sixth episode, as Danny chases Flora up the stairs into the attic, you can spot both the soldier ghost and the vicar ghost looking on. The eighth episode reveals the dark backstory of Viola and Perdita, and midway through, just before Perdita goes to ask Arthur to open the trunk, as she descends the stairs, the portrait of her dead sister seems to come alive, and there's a little angry sound in the air. Some other creepy apparitions that are harder to identify include these hands grabbing onto a chair while Mrs Gross and Owen are eating in the kitchen, meaning there's a ghost hiding under the table, and judging by the sleeves, it's probably the doll face ghost. There's an unknown ghost at the back of the entrance hall in the fourth episode, wearing what looks like breeches and knee-high socks. And that same figure appears in the doorway of the chapel when the Wingraves arrive home in the fifth episode. And there seems to be a ghost lurking at the back of this corridor, which looks like it might be the doll face ghost, but it's a little too blurry to be sure, though the hidden figure definitely wasn't there earlier on the same day. There's also a ghostly figure just behind Jamie, while she and Danny are out looking for Peter Quint, and its long light coloured robe suggests it could be the doll face ghost again. And there are even more plague doctor ghost appearances to look out for on top of the ones I mentioned earlier. When Danny bends down to pick up Flora's faceless doll, as she gets up, there's a blurry figure reflected in the mirror that wasn't there before. Judging from the brownish colours, it looks like the Plague Doctor again. In the second episode, the Masked Doctor can be seen spying on Mrs Gross and Jamie over here. And as Jamie comes back in the house, he's right at the end of the corridor. During the game of hide and seek in the second episode, you can spot the doctor lurking near a window in a room where Danny goes to look for the children. And during the game, the ghost of Miss Jessel is watching in the background while Danny's back is turned. In the third episode, while Danny, Mrs. Gross, Miles and Flora are talking to the police officer who's come to investigate Danny's sighting of Peter Quint, in the background you can spot the outline of the plague doctor's distinctive beaky mask as he observes the scene. And in the fourth episode, you can spot the creepy hat and beak crouching by the desk in the study as Danny walks past with a bottle of wine. And there are even a few secret ghosts when characters aren't at Bly Manor. It's not immediately obvious, but the backpacker that comes out of the room Danny's staying in at the hostel in London is very likely another hidden ghost. Notice that Danny's room is for two people, but only one bed is made up, and it's unlikely anyone else has been staying there, as she's been using the sheets from the second bed to cover up the mirrors in the room. Another ghost outside the manor you might have missed is the ghost of Edmund who appears very briefly in the wind of a taxi that rushes past Danny in the first episode. I also have a theory that there could be some ghosts haunting Miles' boarding school. These two priests in the headmaster's office while Miles is being reprimanded seem strangely silent throughout and not really necessary for the scene. And when the camera cuts to a different angle, the priest to the front of the desk seems to no longer be there. Likewise, when Miles goes to the school's chapel to read a passage from the Bible, there's a mysterious man painting the wall. He seems like an unnecessary character to add to this scene, given Miles has no interaction with him, and I suspect he may be a ghost as well, similar to the clock-fixing ghost in Hill House. Like Danny's backpacker ghost, these figures may simply be there to add to the oppressive sense that Miles already feels from the ghost of Peter Quint. An interesting detail is that all the hidden Bly Manor ghosts we need to look out for throughout the season appear as dolls when Flora introduces Danny to her dollhouse in the very first episode. 
notice that Rebecca Jessel's doll is behind Flora's bed, which is fitting as the ghost of the dead au pair has been taking possession of Flora. Similarly, Peter Quint's doll is hiding behind the wardrobe in Miles' bedroom. The plague doctor is in the bathroom exactly where he appears as Danny is walking through the room. The doll face ghost is down in the entrance hall where he appeared in the fifth episode, as is the soldier ghost who appeared there in episode 3. Perdita is in the attic, which is where she was killed after opening Viola's trunk of clothes and jewels, and she's the ghost who Flora tells to be quiet in the second episode. I haven't seen the dead vicar in the dining room as he is here, but presumably he's lurking around there in a scene somewhere. And Mrs Gross is the doll with the red top and the green skirt. Sneakily, this doll is an early clue to the fact that Mrs Gross is already dead and is actually a ghost at this point, something that isn't revealed until the fifth episode. The other three dolls are the characters that are still alive, Flora, Miles and Danny. As we later find out though, Flora and Miles have already been possessed by ghosts, and Danny will eventually become possessed as well by the Lady of the Lake. Now if you're as creeped out as me by Bly Manor's hidden ghosts spying on the home's inhabitants, you'll find it troubling to know, especially if you're online at home more than ever, that your own internet service provider is also logging all of your online activity. One way to block these secret spies is to use a virtual private network whenever you're connected to the internet. A VPN helps protect your privacy by encrypting your internet connection and making your data unreadable to others, preventing your ISP, government agencies or malicious hackers from reading your emails private messages or knowing which websites you're visiting. Which is why I want to thank the sponsor of this video, NordVPN, who offers one of the world's best virtual private networks. One thing we especially like about Nord is the super fast download speeds on its 5000 plus servers through the use of new generation VPN technologies like WireGuard. And unlike many free and slower VPNs, Nord has a no log policy, meaning it doesn't record or retain details of your online activity when you're connected to its service. Plus, if you're a video junkie, NordVPN can help you bypass geo-restrictions or censorship on content not available to view in your country. Just pick a server in another location and browse the internet as if you were there. You can connect up to six devices at the same time, including your laptop, tablet, desktop phone and home router, so you can cover all of your connected devices. For a limited time, NordVPN are offering all our viewers 68% off the two-year plan and a bonus month completely free. Just visit nordvpn.com slash flicks or tap the link in the video description to access the offer. That's nordvpn.com slash flicks for a huge 68% discount and an additional month completely free. And to discover even more things you missed in The Haunting of Blind Manor and Easter eggs which connect it to The Haunting of Hill House, tap here to watch my upcoming video on that or follow the link in the video description. I'll add the links here as soon as the video is ready. So did you spot any other hidden ghosts this season? And what were your favourite details in the show? Leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed this, then a thumbs up is hugely appreciated. Next, tap left for a full breakdown of the ending of Blind Manor and what that final shot with Jamie really means, or tap right for something else you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!